Hello and welcome to a new screencast showing Glassfish in action. This one specifically is about JPA multi-tenancy with Eclipse Link. So we're using Glassfish 3.1.1 that actually ships with Eclipse Link 2.3, which itself is part of the Indigo release train and available since June 2011. So what we have here is a web application, um, which is fairly simple with a JPA entity. Uh, we'll deploy that web application to Glassfish 3.1.1, which uh, ships with Eclipse uh, 2.3, which has the multi-tenancy uh, feature I'm about to show here. Uh, here are the uh, libraries for Eclipse Link. And my web app is really only three Java files. Uh, JPA entity, as you see here, uh, which has a name query returning all customers in uh, order by ID. And I'll make this entity a multi-tenant uh, aware entity. So you see the uh, Eclipse link uh, annotation. And I'll add another annotation, which is the tenant discriminator column and give a name to that additional column, which will be uh, the way to distinguish one tenant from the other in the table. So, uh, that's the entity. Now here's persistent.xml, uh, fairly simple, if not trivial. I have a create table strategy here. Uh, it uses a, a JTA data source and I'll add another property which says um, that the Eclipse link tenant ID um, property name has a value set to hardware BU for business unit. So this is really an application dealing with customers and imagine here that this is the uh, business unit um, selling hardware. Um, we have a servlet, a servlet 3.0 mapped and declared here with an, an annotation um, which will list all um, the uh, entities by using the all uh, customers name query and simply dump this in the page. To actually populate the table, we have a singleton. That's a new type of EGB in uh, 3.1, um, which we can inject, in which we can inject an entity manager and use a um, some generation code here and persist a number of customer entities. So let's actually um, select run and see what the servlet has to uh, show us. So um, this is slash uh, HW, so hardware customers from one to eight. So if we look at the table, uh, customer table that was created on the fly there, uh, we see those eight uh, entries in the table. And we see that business unit column, remember how I said this, and the value for that tenant, we only have one tenant at this point is hardware BU. So let's clone, copy that project so everything will be absolutely the same, call it software customers, but the entire code is exactly the same. Um, the persistent XML is the same as well, but this is uh, in fact what we actually want to change. But the, the entity, the strategy to populate it and everything else is the same. So opening that second persistent.xml will remove the creation because tables are already there and we'll change the value for the Eclipse link tenant ID property to software business unit. So let's just um, make sure we have a clean um, and build this uh, project and deploy or run actually. So we've deployed this. We have eight new customers that were created and that are different and yet they're stored in the same table. Um, if we look at that specific table, the customer table, which was used from, by that application as well, we have eight more um, entries. And these are with the business unit uh, discriminator set to software business unit. So there you have it, and the exact same application with a multi-tenancy aware JPA entity deployed by two different tenants.